Are you struggling with sin you can't shake off? Are you sick of feeling guilty and ashamed and sad because of your bad habits? Are you starting to wonder if there is any hope for you to become a saint? Well, we've all been there. I re can recall just now all the different moments in my life where I've wondered, how am I supposed to become a saint when the devil does not sleep? He doesn't eat. He doesn't take a break from pestering me and seeking my downfall. How am I to do this when I was born from original sin? How am I to become better and grow when I'm weak? <laughs> I have no strength. And at many moments in my life, I had no hope. But do you know who did have hope? The Jewish people. In the Old Testament, we read about how the Jewish people followed the law of Moses, even though they were constantly being oppressed by other nations. We hear about how they hold on to hope in the coming of a Messiah and believe in their one God, even though everyone around them was worshiping all sorts of God and living lives of pleasure and overindulgence. So where did this hope come from? It came from a promise that God made to Abram. So back in the day, contracts were fulfilled a little bit differently than what we're used to today. Each party from the promise would show up with an beast to slaughter. <laughs> they would lay down um, the beast uh, through a pathway and each of them would walk through the guts and the blood <laughs> to fulfill this promise. What they were saying is, I am just as well as these animals slaughtered in the floor, then breaking off my promise. Well, one day God calls Abram to make the necessary preparations for a contract. And so there goes Abram and he gets his animal and he you know, lays down the, the path and he falls into a deep sleep. Upon waking up, he finds that God himself has walked through the blood and the guts to finalize the covenant. He fulfills this covenant in which he promises to Abram that he's gonna have as many children as the stars in the sky. In the next chapter of our story, Abram is now named Abraham, and he has received a beautiful child, Isaac, through his wife, Sarah. He's living in wealth and joy and happiness, experiencing the love and generosity of God, when one day God asks him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, the one that he so desperately wanted to see born. But in hope of God's promises, in pure obedience, he climbs that mountain and is ready to strike his son. And the angel comes, interrupts him, tells him, you don't have to sacrifice your son. Through Isaac, the son of Abraham, the 12 tribes of Israel are born. And we see that the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham of as many ancestors of the stars becomes fulfilled. And those people, the Jewish people, were the chosen people from which Jesus the savior of our world was born. And it is from these chosen people that we get Jesus, our savior, whose blood was shed to save the world. So don't you see what God is trying to tell us in these stories? Abraham was asked to sacrifice his only son and then relieved from that responsibility because God says, I'll sacrifice mine. So God has constantly proven to us that it's not through our own strength or our own efforts that we will be saved. It will be through His power and will. Abram doesn't walk through the guts, God does. Abram doesn't sacrifice his only son, God does. It is in Him that we have to have hope. It is in Him that we find our salvation. So now let's read what the Catechism has to say about hope. So I'm opening up here to section 1818. The virtue of hope responds to the aspiration to happiness which God has placed in the heart of every man. It takes up the hopes that inspire men's activities and purifies them so as to order them to the kingdom of heaven. It keeps men from discouragement. It sustains him during times of abandonment. It opens up his heart in expectation of eternal beatitude. Buoyed up by hope, he is preserved from selfishness and led to the happiness that flows from charity. So there you have it, that's hope. As for me, I can't say I didn't have an arduous and painful journey with hope, but I'll tell you what worked for me. It was, it was Our Lady. When I introduced a daily rosary and a Divine Mercy Chaplet into my life, I found so many messages of hope coming my way, and I started to see a lot of change. 
Not to mention the incredible importance of the sacraments that God gave us in His mercy to save us, like the sacrament of confession, often confession, right? Being able to go uh, whenever you can and whenever you find yourself in mortal sin, that changed my life. And of course, on top of everything, being able to make it to Mass to receive our Lord as often as possible, that, that is life-changing. And <laughs> that's why the blood of Christ was shed, so that we could have the Eucharist, and that we can have hope, right? Hope thanks to Jesus Christ. So if you're searching for freedom from feelings of shame or guilt or abandonment or discouragement, I invite you to rest in the hope of knowing that God saved you, loves you, forgives you, and can transform you.